everybody. I'm here with Rebecca Parsons, the CTO of ThoughtWorks. Rebecca, thanks for joining us. Good to be here. So, IT consultancy. Break that down for me. Tell me what what is the mission of ThoughtWorks? What do you guys do better than anybody else? Well, let me start with the first part of the question, yes. which is we write software for other people. So, when the Guardian newspaper, you know, wants to do something, we would go in and we would write for them. Okay. Um, what, what makes us different are a few things. Number one, uh, we are very focused on technology excellence. We are very, uh, we spend a lot of time in reflecting on, are we doing this well? Okay. Are we building software properly? And as a result, the quality of our software is significantly increased. And there's a myth that you have to trade off time and quality. Okay. And yet, if you do it properly, it actually takes less time to have high quality because unless you're never gonna change it again, if it's poor quality, it's much harder to change. And so yeah, you might be able to get the first one out the door faster, but the second one is gonna be slower, the third one is gonna be slower. Um, you couple that, we, we are a very purpose-driven company. We, um, we have actually, as, as part of our mission statement, to create extraordinary impact through our culture and our technology okay, excellence. Cool. And that's that's broad societal impact, not just technology. Gotcha. Now let's talk about the last few years. Everyone is like, the cliche is that because of COVID, because of the digitalization of everything at the time, you know, society sped leaps seven years or like 10 years. Mm -hmm. What were the last few years like during COVID and after now? What well, do you guys do? Well, a lot of what companies were trying to do is figure out how can I engage differently? I've lost my physical space, okay. but I still want to have a relationship with my customer. I still want to be able to deliver services. How can I do that when I don't have a physical space anymore? And for some, uh, in particular, uh, financial services was way ahead of this. You know, online banking, online check yeah. writing. So they didn't have as much to worry about. But you think of restaurants, for example. Many of them had no way of taking orders, of doing takeout, anything like that. And so they had to set up systems and business processes to engage with their customers in a completely different way. Yeah. So it really was a split world. You had people who were just scrambling and who may not even have had the fundamental back-end systems to allow you to come and say, hey, this is what I want you to do. Gotcha. Um, and then you had the others who had been down this path for a long time, and what they could do instead is say, okay, what can we do to support, in a B2B fashion, other organizations to facilitate their movement into this online world of delivering products and services? Wow. If, what, if I'm a CEO or a leader of a company, tech-wise, what should I be worried about now? What should I be thinking about? What are the big trends or the big things that I need to get moving on right now in terms of in the tech space? Well, the, the number one thing still, I think, has to be cybersecurity. Um, the more things go online, the more hackers have something to go after. Okay. You know, a restaurant that only had a static website and didn't keep reservations and didn't have credit cards, they had nothing for anybody to steal. Yeah. Now you have more and more organizations wow. that have personal identifiable personally identifiable information, and yet they probably don't have the experience of cybersecurity. And there's an incredible asymmetry of power because as an organization, I have to defend against the entire army of hackers. The hacker is going to decide, I want to go after Steve, yeah. and I'll bring my entire toolbox against Steve. Don't give them any ideas, please. They're watching. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, um, I, I, think that, I think the next thing, though, is... I do believe that we are getting close to that tipping point, that killer app where things like AR, VR, the metaverse, whatever that is yes. going to be, <laughs> um, is going to have the same kind of change mobile had several years ago. When people first had mobile phones and you had an app store, you know, our clients were literally saying, oh, I just need to build a toy. Okay. I need something in the app store. And in a relatively short period of time, that went to the mobile phone is going to be a fundamental part of how my customers interact with me. And this is now a crucial 
element of my IT estate, and oh, by the way, now I've got legacy sitting in the App Store. That does nothing I needed gotcha. to do. We have to start thinking about what what is the existence of these virtual worlds going to mean for the way all of these different organizations interact with, with their clients. Yeah, this killer app, what's it going to do? Exactly, and I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> Would you predict, is it going to come from uh, a startup or will it come from one of the, the giants? I think the um, the hardware will come from a giant and the app itself will probably come from a startup. Wow, incredible. Uh, be because part of the problem is we've been solving problems with technology for decades using fundamentally the same kind of architecture. And even the mobile phone, it changed the screen size and it changed how we wanted to think about you know, the data we sent back and yeah. forth, but it fundamentally didn't change anything. How would you do a loan application in a virtual world? What does that mean? Yeah. You know, and it, no, it's probably not, I'm going to create something that looks like a branch bank you know, in the virtual world and somebody's going to walk in and sit down at a desk and write. It's probably not that, but what does it mean to solve business problems yeah. in a virtual world? We have to think completely differently. The laws of physics do not apply in a virtual world. Yeah. You know, you can do the Harry Potter thing and have a nice small little tent and a huge, you know, huge suite of rooms inside. Yeah, I got a mortgage last year and I had, they needed a real ink signature and I had to go find a fax machine. Oh, wow. Yeah, old school. <laughs> yeah. In terms of, we're talking about you know, future metaverse, right now in the software world, IT world, what is the most overhyped trend or thing, and what's the most, that's the first part, and then what's the most underrated or under, um, you know, kind of underhyped feature that's coming up, or in general, trend? Um, at the moment, I think there's a race between the metaverse and NFTs. Um, for overhyped. Um, we still don't really know what the metaverse is. Yeah. Um, people actually disagree on whether it's a metaverse or the metaverse. I believe in the a metaverse concept okay. um, because you're not going to have one platform to rule them all. Yeah. I really don't believe that. Um, but people are saying they're doing things in the metaverse and they're selling things in the metaverse and, and it's like, okay, but what does it mean? It means just all marketing to get attention. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But it is kind of like what the App Store was when it first came out. It's some place where I need to put a toy yeah. to say I'm in, I'm in a metaverse yeah. now. Um, under height, that's an interesting question. Um, Tim Berners-Lee, who was the uh, creator of the World Wide Web, yep. has been uh, promoting a set of standards to change the way you get to relate to your own data. Um, and he's got a, a, a set of protocols, solid and pods. Um, and basically the idea is you have, you have control of all of your data your credit card data, your banking data, yeah. your medical data, and you say to your bank, I will give you this access to this slice of my data, which is your banking data, to do this with and nothing else. And so no longer does your bank own your financial data, you own your financial data. Gotcha. And that way, you know, Facebook can get access only to what you tell gotcha. Facebook, and it doesn't own any of the data. It's going to turn the business models of many of the social media companies around. Um, very few people are talking about this and whether that protocol is going to be the one that wins, I do think there is a reckoning coming wow. where more and more uh, consumers are going to say, no thank you, you can't have my data. Uh, we're getting more people who are acknowledging they don't like to be the product. Okay, I, I will pay to make me not be the product. Yeah. Well, that's a great place to end. Thank you, thank you for your time. Thank Rebecca, you so much. Rebecca Parsons, CTO of ThoughtWorks. Thank you.